Well, hello everyone. So I am an SRE in DemoWare. It's basically a game company, but we don't make games. But that's all right. We make the back end for them. And what I'm going to talk here today, don't consider this as a talk, because it's not something super new, something super shiny. It's very basic, actually, and chances are you guys know a lot more than I know. So yeah, resource management and isolation. Everyone uses it every day and like all the time. Nobody cares, but yeah, it's really important all the time. Um, yeah, first, why do we need this? Like resource management, I have a computer, I want to use it, that's the resource I want to use. Not really, you have many things running at the same time, even if you don't use your computer. So yeah, you have shared service, servers where many people are using at the same time and you don't want a single person using everything you have, like it's not fair. Or maybe uh, you, we are providing a service using your hardware for the service, but you have monitoring systems running at the same time, loads of background tasks, backups running all the time, and you don't, and you don't want to use 100% of your hardware like running backups and make your customers not happy, not accessing your systems when they need it. And how can I manage resources? There are many ways, actually. Uh, most of them we don't notice because they just happen and we are happy with this. Uh, you can embed the resource management inside your application. Yeah, it's fair enough, but it's not easy and it's going to take a, lo a long time to make it work well. And we can use virtual machines. That's pretty basic. You have a hypervisor, many virtual machines to define how much resource, how much memory, how much CPU, how much I.O. you want to for each virtual machine, it's going to work pretty well. And you have this super cool mega solving all the problems of the world containers. Yeah, they, they work well. Like, especially Docker, everyone loves Docker. Cool, I'm not saying I don't, but yeah, it happens. Uh, so yeah, containers are great, they solve many problems. And I agree with that, truly. Uh, for developers, it's amazing. You can run in a machine, you don't need specific service, you don't need to take care of your virtual machines or ask for your sysadmins, SREs, whatever, to take care of your resource. Wonderful. Your application can scale and use 100% of your hardware. Fair enough, it's one of the reasons you use it. You like to use immutable images. I totally agree with you. That's the perfect occasion for using containers and forget about everything else I'm talking today. You are in the right way. Or you need to scale up and down like aggressively all the time, like hundreds of, hundreds of times every single day. You can't do that with virtual machines pretty fast. It's going to take a lot more time and it's a lot more expensive. And yeah. You guys know a lot more than I know for better applications with containers because you use a lot more than I use, so there are many reasons to use them. And then, yeah, you have a giant infrastructure running thousands of containers and everything is perfect. And suddenly, you have a zero day on OpenSSL. Wonderful. What do you do? You basically recreate a thousand containers just because you need to change a single library. It works, right? I agree, it works pretty well. Yeah, might be, not sure. But Linux also works, works pretty well since always. Not just Linux, any kernel use like this kind of features since the age is starting with Solaris. Uh, but as most of us are using Linux nowadays, let's focus on the most basic resource management and controlling that's available in all kernels that we're using. It doesn't matter if 4x, 3x, even 6, you have most Linux distributions with control groups available. It's not a separate thing, it's not a separate service, it's not something magical, it's just there, and you can use it all the time. It's a kind of feature, so yeah, you have it, it's running, you don't need more things. You can label the processes according to the group, so you can have multiple groups in the same machine, you don't, don't need to take care about the disk, virtual machines, containers, whatever. You just label the group to a process it's using. Simple like that. 
uh, yeah, the configuration is pretty easy. Cgroups v2 is going to make it a lot more easy and a lot more usable, because the version one is not so user-friendly. But it's basically a hierarchy, and you just place things inside, create files, folders, and it's going to work. Controllers provide interfaces for most of the resources that you have in your machine. I'm going to talk about them in one minute. Uh, yeah, basically you can throttle, limit, make key OS for a specific service that need to have resources when they need. And yeah, they are native, they have native integration with systemd. What does that mean? Yeah, some people hate systemd. I don't, but I use, and yeah, I, if you hate it, I, I understand you. But yeah, so basically, you have systemd running, you just specify your groups, resources, and it takes care of the rest for you. I wouldn't say it's so bad. It works. Uh, about resource allocation. And then you say, no, but virtual machines isolate everything, or containers are giving me a completely isolated environment from the other processes and everything. What can I do with C groups? All right, you can do the same. You basically isolate services and workloads. You don't have a hypervisor in the middle. It's totally fair. So it's not as isolated as a virtual machine is. I agree. Uh, you can control your background tax, tasks running. What does that mean? If you have a super busy system and you are taking a backup at the same time or in the middle of the day because you need it, all right, it's going to run. You don't need to make it, your system unavailable to the customers. It's just limit the amount of resources that your backups can take or any other operation that's going to be like very expensive for the system. You can have control over asynchronous tasks, like things that run according to something that happens somewhere. And you don't know when it's going to run. It might be a critical time for you, but if you have a limit for that, even if it, everything is broken and it's consuming 100% of resources for nothing, it's going to work. And it's not going to affect your customers or users or whatever. When you have a shared server or a shared system that many people are using the same piece of hardware, you always will have bad neighbors. You might have the wonderful customers, the best customers ever. One of them is going to use more than the other one, and it's not fair to make the other customer that pays the same not having access to the hardware that he would be, especially for providers like internet services providers, web servers, and these kind of things, shared hosting. It's really useful. You can balance workloads in a single host. What does that mean? Some applications consume more than others, but that doesn't mean that the, cons that the application that consumes more is more important. Maybe it's not, maybe it's the opposite. And you can control it from the operating system level and don't need to touch the application. It's the optimal solution, no, but it works. And no external dependencies, as I said. It's in the kernel, you can just use, it's available and it's working easy. And you can integrate in your application like natively. So. No big deal. You are writing a new app. You don't need to write the controllers, worry about many things. You can, use, you can just use the APIs that the kernel provide, and it's going to happen according to the operating system, and you have all the data you need. So basically, like, I resume, use the right tool for the right thing. Containers are good. Of course they are. But if you just know containers, of course you're going to use containers for everything. So Take some time, research something, see how things work. I don't like virtual machines, all right? I don't like containers, cool. I don't like cgroups, perfect. You have mesos, you have many other options. You don't need to use just a single tool. Get the best tool for the right job, make it happen. You learn something new at least. And yeah, that's it. That's the content. Use the right tool for the right job.